Good morning. Welcome to the Nutrient Cycling Soil Health and Food Safety Conference. This is the first talk in the nutrient technology section. I'll be talking about reconnecting the broken nutrient cycle with a specific focus on phosphorus. My name is Joe Harrison. I'm with Washington State University. The project I'll be talking about was a collaborative effort and funded by Natural Resource Conservation Service via a Conservation Innovation Grant. We also received support from the Dairy Farmers of Washington and partnered with Multiform Harvest uh, from Seattle, Washington. In this slide, you'll see several pictures. To the left, you'll see a uh, cone-like system that's mounted on a trailer. And that's the system we use for collecting phosphorus from liquid dairy manure at about 30 dairies in eastern and western Washington the last couple of years. The project was <clears throat> to develop a nutrient cycling relationship between dairy producers and alfalfa growers in Washington state. So we worked with the dairy industry to collect struvite, uh, phosphorus in the form of struvite. And then struvite was utilized on two different commercial alfalfa hay grower farms, one in Ellensburg, Washington, and the other in Moses Lake. In your lower hand, uh, bottom right, you'll see uh, material that looks much like sand, and that's actually the struvite material that we extract from the liquid manure on the dairy farms. And then the upper right is the application of some of this material to the alfalfa grower fields. So as I mentioned, what we're trying to do is develop a recycling relationship. We know that we move a lot of phosphorus to Western Washington via alfalfa, but we don't coincidentally um, transfer or transport phosphorus to Eastern Washington back to where uh, the, the uh, nutrients are needed. So what we've done, is set up a project where we can actually try to build a relationship so that this nutrient recycling relationship can be uh, lasting for decades to come. Uh, this slide uh, shows um, a little bit about phosphorus and utilization by the cow. Only about 27 percent, or what I do is I round it up to a third. A third or less of the phosphorus that the cow eat actually ends up in the milk carton and shipped off uh, the farm. The remaining room, um, phosphorus is in the manure most of it in the feces, very little of it in the, in the urine. If we look at Whatcom County as an example of a view of reality in 2002, uh, and this is our northernmost county, we had about 2,362 tons of phosphorus were eaten by cows, about 637 tons of the, the phosphorus which was consumed was exported in milk. And manure was applied to about 44,425 acres of land. And um, so that left about 1,724 ton of phosphorus balance, positive balance. So in order to use that, there was really a need for another 44,000 acres. So this uh, back of the envelope calculation really got my attention uh, nearly two decades ago. So we've been working over the last 15 years uh, with Dr. Keith Bowers and Multiform Harvest to um, utilize his technology called a fluidized bed and that fluidized bed forms in this cone as you see on this trailer. And what we do is we um, use acid to lower the pH of the manure to free up the calcium from the phosphorus because we need to have the phosphorus in a free form. And then with the uh, ammonia and magnesium that are in the manure and attaching to that free phosphorus, then we uh, raise the pH and it makes more of these struvite crystals. And after the system's run for a few days, you can simply shut it down, drain out the bed, let it air dry, and the material's ready to use as a fertilizer source. This is a close-up picture uh, with a quarter as a coin there to give you reference. This is what the material looks like after it's uh, removed from liquid dairy manure. Very easily transported and um, extremely low moisture. The fertilizer formula for struvite, uh, pure struvite has an NPK plus magnesium formula of 629.0 and a plus 10. It's uh, a slow release rate of phosphorus, which makes it um, good for being water soluble and having a sustained release during the growing season, but it's not prone to leaching. So when we evaluated this uh, mobile system across dairies in Western and Eastern Washington, 
we looked at the reduction of both orthophosphorus as well as total phosphorus. And in 27 runs where we saw a reduction in orthophosphorus as being positive, the uh, average reduction was 32% and the range was one to 76%. The very high numbers are a result of manure being digested and anaerobic digesters and therefore more of the phosphorus in the manure being in an in inorganic form, which is more available for forming the struvite. In 28 runs where we had total phosphorus reductions, which were positive, we had an average of about 29% and a range of two to 71.8%. Again, um, these higher numbers being from anaerobic, anaerobically digested manure. Okay, so we had uh, agronomic use experiments. Um, again, some pictures from these fields were um, in uh, Eastern Washington, both in uh, Othello and, or excuse me, in Moses Lake and Ellensburg. And we had one field that was a new seeding. Uh, there was 64 pounds of phosphorus provided in two different forms to the field, uh, split the field in half. One was monomonium phosphate only, and the other side we had um, struvite. In the established stand, we, um, depending on the side of the field, uh, again, we wanted to apply uh, to soil test and also have the same amount of phosphorus there available to the plant. So on the monomonium phosphate side, we had uh, 57 pounds of monomonium phosphate, no struvite. And then on the struvite side of the field, we had 48 pounds of phosphorus from struvite and, uh, or excuse me, from MAP and 174 pounds of um, struvite to, to provide this 75 pounds of, of phosphorus. And then we've looked at this over the last uh, three years. So this is data from 2018 and, uh, and a little bit of 2019. Um, and you can see that um, on a ton per acre basis, the blue bars are uh, monomonium phosphate only and the struvite plus map are the orange bars and see that the yields are very similar. Uh, if anything, maybe a slight advantage to the uh, struvite treatment. This is uh, the second farm. And again, uh, same use of coding here. The uh, orange bars are the struvite plus map and uh, the blue bars are the map only. Again, uh, emphasize that the same amount of phosphorus was applied to these fields. And we, uh, again, tend to see a little bit of an advantage to the struvite plus map. This is uh, overall average for the two years uh, in both farms. 2019, uh, distinct uh, bit of a yield advantage here with struvite, whereas in uh, 2018, they were very similar and that was the uh, initiation year. We just sampled uh, a few weeks ago and kind of finalized our 2020 data. So we won't have all those results um, for a bit yet. This is pounds per acre of um, that was actually harvested in the hay over time. And again, you can see a fairly similar performance. In some cases, uh, struvite uh, provided a little better uptake and removal of phosphorus. So let's talk about the economics a bit. It's common in the dairy industry to talk about what it costs per cow per day. And in this case, uh, what I'm showing you is the chemical costs. So an anaerobically digested manure system was about 22 cents a day to form the struvite. With a uh, raw manure or undigested manure, it's about 39 cents. But it's, it's really not a very telling number because what you really need to do is look at um, what the, the need is for removal on any given farm. And so you really need to ask the question, how much phosphorus needs to be exported to get balance on that farm? So the net zero balance will be affected by, by a number of factors such as number of cows, number of acres utilized for manure application, phosphorus utilization by crops grown, and double or triple cropping practices, diet manipulation, and of course the export of manure off farm. So you can see it gets to be a number of factors considered. So each farm is gonna have its own unique solution and therefore the, the price per cow per day, just it, while it's an indicator, it's not, um, it's a rough indicator. So what we did is we took uh, some examples. In this case, we had 500 acres of cropland and the crops took up about 60 pounds of phosphorus uptake over a season, or over the growing season or for the growing year. And we looked at three different uh, sizes of herds. So we went from 1,000 lactating cows down to 600. 
and the cost here then is what it would cost to achieve phosphorus balance given this type of scenario, 500 acres and the respective number of lactating cows. So in each case, it's gonna cost you more money to get a phosphorus balance with the raw manure than the anaerobically digested, because again, we can extract more of the phosphorus from anaerobically digested manure. If we look at this in a slightly different way. If we now uh, look at the number of acres, but we stay with a thousand lactating cows, we can see that as we get up here towards 895 acres, it gets to be very little cost to get into uh, uh, a net zero balance for that farm in terms of phosphorus. So it's really critical. Uh, obviously the cows per acre uh, are a big driver in uh, coming up with this, uh, these, these results. So in conclusion, this project demonstrated that phosphorus can be captured from liquid dairy manure under a variety of field conditions. It was most economical when the manure is low in solids, uh, particularly suspended solids and calcium. And that it requires less chemicals to actually perform the process. And also when inorganic phosphorus is a high percentage of the total phosphorus, which would be the case for anaerobically digested manure. The alfalfa growers in the state are willing to use this as an alternative to conventional sources of phosphorus. And so I think we have uh, established a, a, a good opportunity here for uh, this to be a success in the future. Thank you for listening and we'll take questions.